Podcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining our session for In the Know, Tips and Tricks for Evolve 365. We'll be getting started in just another minute, giving people a chance to log in. Um, I did want to remind everybody, we started this weekly series to give some simple and easy tips that anyone can go back to their desk and quickly implement. We know your time is valuable, so we want to keep the sessions to no more than 30 minutes, sometimes less. We'll push these topics out monthly, so you only have to sign up once for the whole series for the month, instead of weekly four or five times. If you missed the last few sessions, don't worry. Each session stands on its own, and you can always review them on the Planet Technologies YouTube channel. So we're working on topics for June now, and those should be announced next week. We'll wait another minute or so before we get started today. In today's session, we're going to be talking about references and reviewing in Word. I'm your host today, Tanya Kaiser. Just a little bit about me. I've got more than 15 years experience with project management across multiple industries, including technology, legal, nonprofit, and construction. I'm a longtime Microsoft geek and a big SharePoint nerd. If you do have any questions after this session, please feel free to use the chat window. You can also reach out to me on Twitter or LinkedIn. And a little bit about Planet. Planet has been providing expert support in the Microsoft world for over 18 years. We offer full services for the entire Microsoft Cloud and Productivity Suite, including advisory, deployment and training services, mobile application development and solutions, and strategic business consulting, including technology, compliance, and security guidance. We're going to jump right into things. Like I said, our topic today is working the magic in Word, references and reviewing made easy. So the last few weeks, we've taken a close look at Outlook from some business email basics to working with your calendars. Today we're going to shift gears a little bit and look directly at the application for Word. We'll be looking at the built-in reference and review tools Word has. That includes footnotes, endnotes, cross-references, using track changes, and also comparing and combining documents. We're going to go right into it. So footnotes and endnotes and cross-references, these are all a type of reference or citation that you can accomplish in Word. A few reasons why you may want to use these, depending on the kind of documentation that you're working on, they may be required. That can be legislation, regulation documents, case law, but can also be a response to a customer, a response to an inquiry, any time that you want to make some inline notes to your readers of that document. So references are easier to track and amend instead of those inline citations that use parentheses. If you have a really large document and you have a lot of parentheses throughout the document, it can get a little bit cluttered up. And it's also really hard to go back and change all of those if you have to change one more than once. Footnotes and endnotes make it a lot easier to manage all of your citations. Again, it's also a great way to provide some additional information to a reader without cluttering up your main content. Um, we will show you also cross-references. And those are especially useful when you have a note or citation that you need to use repeatedly. So instead of listing it multiple times, you can list it once and then cross-reference it. And going back to my earlier comment, using a cross-reference, you can change it one place without having to go and change it multiple locations. So we are going to jump right into it, and I'm going to show you very quickly some of the tools within Word. So this is our online OneDrive where we store a lot of our documents. This is a demo account that I'm using. And I can open this document and go directly into Word Online to edit it. So the Word Online, just like all of the other Office Online apps, it is a little bit of a simplified version. But you can see, even within the online version, I still have quite a few reference tools. So if I go over to our Insert menu, you're going to see we do have a small section for footnotes. Now, right now, we have footnotes and endnotes dimmed because there's none in this document. But if I wanted to come in and just add a quick footnote to the document, I can go ahead and say insert a footnote, and it's going to insert it, and I can just say make a small note.
And you can see I do have the option, even within the online app, to format those footnotes. So this is going to give you some basic information. One thing that we see in a lot of documentation is the body of the text may have one size font, and the footnotes may have a slightly smaller font size. So if I wanted to make that change, I can come in here, make that little change, and click Apply to All because we want them to be consistent. So I've inserted my footnote. You can see just like that, I've went ahead and made a change. Now you can see where it inserted it, just put it in the place of my cursor. If I wanted to move that, I can just highlight my footnote, use cut and paste, and then put it at the end. Now if this is a document that is not that lengthy, you know, it's only a few pages, not a big deal. But if we had a really, really long document, we wouldn't want to keep inserting t text within the main content. It can get really, really cluttered up. So you can see even within the Word online app, I've got the ability to just come in and insert a quick footnote. Now what I am going to show you is the difference between working online and on the application itself, and we'll get to that in just a little bit, but now you can see I have the option to insert an endnote as well. Now the difference in Word with an endnote and a footnote, footnotes are normally at the bottom of the page on where the note is included, and endnotes are at the very end of the document. And you can see on my screen they also have different numbering, so our footnotes are going with numeral one, and our endnotes are starting with small letter I. We can change that as well in the full online version. So I'm just going to add in a quick endnote. We don't really want to do any formatting, but I'll pop that up and just show you what it is. Again, sometimes those endnotes are a smaller font size. In this case, I'm just going to click cancel. So you can see clicking back to our document, we've got one footnote entered and one endnote. If I scroll down to the page, since this is a one-page document, you're really not going to see those. But now we're going to go ahead and open it in Word and take a closer look at the full application. So since I am using a demo account, it is going to prompt me to re-enter my information. You can see it opened in read-only mode, but I'm going to go ahead and say that I want to edit the document. That will bring it to my full. Now, now that we're in the full Word application, you can see when I place my mouse over the footnote, it gives me a little pop-up box that is giving me the text of the footnote. And the endnote will do the same thing. Now, if I scroll down, I can see that my footnote is here at the bottom of my page. So if I wanted to come in and edit it directly, I now have the ability to do that. You can see what a difference that small font size makes. So if I wanted to come in and say that font is really too small, I don't want to change each one since I have multiple endnotes and footnotes in a really large document. But I can come over to my References tab. You can see all the options that I have. I have Footnote and I have a slight drop down. It's going to take me to each one if I want to. But I can come in and play with this menu a little bit more now that I'm in the full Word version. So we're going to go ahead and just insert an extra footnote. You can see that our font changed again, so I'm just going to go ahead and make those consistent. And now we do have that one endnote, so I'm going to go to the very end of this document. Endnotes are normally placed at the very end of the document. We can also come in and insert a page if we want them to sit on their own page. But maybe in through the process of editing this document, we decide that we really don't want a mix of footnotes and endnotes. Maybe we want only endnotes. If we go back to our references column, we do have the ability to shop, to swap those out. So you can come in and say insert an endnote, insert a footnote, and then you can modify the document itself to make them all endnotes or footnotes. Now the other thing that I do want to mention is a cross-reference. So a cross-reference, if you have a note that you need to insert in places multiple times, rather than duplicating that text, we could come over here to our very first endnote, copy the text, and use it repeatedly, maybe we need to insert that footnote, that footnote one more time, and it's the exact same text. 
but that can get a little busy with our document. We're just seeing the same text over and over. So a better way to do that is to come in, and I'm just going to go ahead and delete it. You can see that my footnote is highlighted, and I click delete, and then it's removed, and it's removed automatically from the bottom of the page. It will also renumber them depending on where that footnote is. So instead of inserting a duplicate footnote, I'm going to insert a cross-reference. So you do have on the references ribbon a section for footnotes, and notes are included. Further down that ribbon under captions, you have the option for a cross-reference. So a cross-reference is going to link us to that one footnote that we need to reference repeatedly. So when you insert a cross-reference, you get a little pop-up. And it's going to want you to pick. So in this case, we know it's our footnote. You can see it gives us all of our footnotes listed there. And it's that first one that we want to reference. So we insert it. We close out. takes a couple of different actions. And now you can see we've got a cross-reference to it. So cross-references are really, really useful when you have info that you need to repeat multiple times. The one thing that I do caution about cross-references is, as you can see where my cursor is, it does not make that cross-reference superscript like you do get with the footnotes. You have to kind of come in manually and make it superscript just to make sure that it's looking consistent. So again, we've got our footnote here, we've got an endnote, and now we have a cross-reference. You can see the cross-reference doesn't give you that pop-up box because it's actually a hyperlink, but you can use Control-Click to go to that same cross-reference and it's going to take you back to it. So if we needed to reference this date range throughout the report, we can just keep inserting cross-references. And the reason we want to do that is if we go to our footnote, maybe we have to change the date on this. Maybe it's not March 31st. Maybe it's actually January. And we would only need to change this once versus multiple times if we had listed each of them as an individual footnote. So hopefully that's giving you a little bit of insight into when you want to insert a footnote, when you want to insert an endnote, and then maybe when you want to use a cross-reference. Now again, going back to the word web app, you're not going to see that option for a cross-reference in your insert menu. It's only going to show up when you go to the full Word application. So I'm going to go ahead and click Save on this and close it out of Word. I'm just going to put it on my desktop for right now. Oh, and I'm in a read-only copy, which we're going to get to very, very soon. So this is actually a good example. So we'll go ahead and keep that open. So the next thing that I want to remind you of is track changes. So we just saw an instance where I opened a document that was read-only. I selected to edit the document, but it still kept it read-only. So you can work online, and you can use co-authoring with OneDrive or SharePoint, where multiple people can edit a document at the same time. But there are still instances where you want to use track changes. And track changes is a great way to see exactly what edits have been made to a document. So it will show you who made the edit, it will also give you the original text, so if they're deleting something, you will see a strike through. If they're adding something, you will generally see underlines. And then you can work through each, addition, each edit and accept or decline those changes. You also have the option in the Word web app to view the document with and without those changes as well. So it's just an additional layer of reviewing that you have possible with you. So we're going to take a quick look at that, and I'm going to go back to my Word web version. You can see, I can see from within this who the document's shared with. If I click share, it's going to give me the chance to invite people to get a link or to see who it's shared with. And I've got this document shared with quite a few people. But for the most part, they can only view the document. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to give somebody edit permission. I'm going to save that change. And I can do this directly from within the document using Word Online. And I'm going to go ahead and close that out. So if I wanted to review the document, you can see I can go from a new comment to show comments. Now there's not a whole lot in here right now, but since I just gave permission for someone to edit the document, we're going to take another look and see what would happen if somebody is editing that document. So I'm going to just make a small change. I'm on my separate screen so you won't see me typing for a bit. 
This is using another demo account that I have. And maybe we decided we're not going to do annual financial reports, we're going to do biannual financial reports. And you'll see once I made that change on my other screen that it popped up within Word Online because I now have the ability to edit that document. So the other thing that I can do is come in and enter a comment right here. So I can highlight the text or I can just put it where my cursor is and I can insert a new comment. and I can post that question. So this is a really simplified view of Word. We're going to go to the full Word web, web application and take a closer look at all the Track Changes tools. So right now within the Word web app, you can see we've got our basic home ribbon. We did have the insert ribbon where we were showing how to insert footnotes and endnotes. We also have page layout. We're not messing with that right now. We've got that review tab, but it is fairly simplified. We can insert a new comment, we can show the comments, we can toggle that on or off if we want to, and we can go back and forth between the next comment and the previous one when we have more than one. You can see that I can tell who edited this document, but now we're going to go into the full Word version. So I'm going to open this in Word again. Remember I saved that other document with a new name, and that's going to be useful when we get to the next part about comparing and combining documents. So I'm opening this document, and hopefully Word decides to respond in a few minutes. And you can see it opened in Word, and it's prompting me that other people are editing this document. It's just giving me a notice, and I can say, yes, I want to do see automatically changes as they happen. So you can tell within this it's a slightly different view, but we're going to go to our review column, our review ribbon. And you can see I've got the same little layout. I can see a new comment. I can go back and forth between comments. But I've also got this track changes option right here. Now, since people are editing the document and I can tell, that's great. But maybe I want to actually see what changes they are making. So I can use the ribbon to turn on track changes. If you also use your status bar, you can right click on the status bar at the bottom of your screen and then have track changes turned on. And that means that you will see it on the status bar. So two ways that you can do that. You can use the ribbon to turn it on or off, or if you have that selected for your status bar, you can turn it on and off that way. Now it's not going to show me the track changes for that first edit that was made. But if I come in and I make a change now, And now you can see I have options back in my ribbon to show simple markup, all markup, and it's going to give me that. So the default setting for track changes when you open in Word is going to be simple markup. And what it's doing with that is showing you the document as it's edited, how it's going to look in the final version. If you want to see the full changes, you can just change that to all markup. And now you can see I have those strike throughs and underlines. Now again, it's not going to show me that one change that Garth made because we didn't turn on track changes at that point. So it's assuming that it's already accepted. But if I come back and I make another change, now that track changes are turned on, I should be able to see that within the document. Now you're seeing a little bit of co-authoring with multiple people working at the same time. That is possible with OneDrive and SharePoint, and it is something that lets multiple people edit it at the same time. So that's a great feature, but sometimes you still want to see all of the track changes. And on our review panel, we can go through and see now that we have this other bar here on the ribbon for changes, I can go back and forth to each change and choose to accept them or reject them. And it's going to do each one at a time. If I wanted to come in and highlight the whole thing and just say reject, I can also do that as well. So that's a quick little look at reviewing track changes in a document. Now the other thing that we want to talk about is, great, we have these track changes, but what's going to happen when I go back to SharePoint? How is that going to look? So I'm going to go ahead and click Save on the document, go back to my SharePoint window. And I'm just going to refresh this screen.
And you can see I'm still showing that other people are editing this document, and now I can see the other changes. So it's a slightly different experience whether you're using Word Online or the actual Word application. If you do find yourself needing to do track changes quite a bit, I would recommend that you use the Word version just so you can control how you're viewing that document. Now, if I wanted to view that document and say, I just want to see the original, it gives me the option to toggle through it. If I want to see all the markup, again, but those changes that are being made online in Word are not going to come through as, tra as track changes. So you can see I made the biannual change online in Word, and I changed this from financial report to financial statement. So that's where you really want to decide how you're going to work with your documents and maybe decide on some governance. Do you have check-in and check-out selected if you're using Word Online, or are you only going to work on documents in the Word application and make sure everyone's using track changes? Lots of different reasons why you would want to do either one of those. It's going to be what's working best for your document and your team at the time. So we're going to continue on and talk about another scenario, which is comparing and combining documents. So this will allow you to compare two different documents. It is helpful to review other changes that people have made. And if you need to, you can also merge multiple review copies. So we've been switching back and forth between Word Online and Word. But we know that it doesn't always happen that everyone is working off of SharePoint or working off of OneDrive. Sometimes, no matter how hard we try, people are still going to work from their email. And you'll get the occasional incident where somebody says, hey, here's my changes. I emailed them to you. And you then have to decide, are you going to accept their changes? How are you going to do that? Nobody wants to go through a document line by line and compare them manually, so we let Word do that for us. Um, there's many reasons why somebody may not working, be working on the collaborative document. Maybe they were offline. Maybe they're an external party. But it is good to know that Word does give you an option to help you with that incident. So we're going to jump back to our document. And I'm actually going to go to the first Word one that I saved when it was prompting me to save with a different name because I had opened that read-only version and continuing to edit it. So if you had check-in, check-out set up on your document library, this may be something that happens. I did it myself unintentionally, but it's working great for our last example here. So we know that in the collaborative version, this was changed to biannual and report was changed to statement. So I don't have any of those changes right now. So what we want to do is we want to go back to our review tab. You can see at the very end here we have a section for compare. So now that we have a couple of changes, I'm going to make one more small change. Just add in a separate paragraph there. I'm going to go ahead and click Save on this. And now we know that our first document that I saved inadvertently with a new name is very different from the online version that other people have been working on. So the first thing we want to do is use compare. Now you can see this does give you options to compare major version, last version, maybe a specific version number. If you're ever working on regulatory documents or a document that has gone through a lot of changes and you need to track the history, these are really helpful to compare different versions. But in our case, I just want to compare two different documents. So I need to be able to select my original document, which is the draft version we were working on, and my revised document, which is the one that I saved inadvertently with my name. Now you see a couple other options here. I can label the changes, in this case, with my name. If I click More, it's going to give you some settings on how you want those changes to appear. I generally leave those alone um, and just let them know I want to see every change at the word level. If you know that there's minute changes you want to view, you can change that to the character level, but generally the word level is fine. I'm also saying that I want to see this in a brand new document, and I do have the choice of seeing it in the original or revised document. But in my case, I'm going to do a brand new document. I don't want it to touch my original version at all. Now this is the where it prompts you saying track changes. We're going to assume that they've been accepted. If they hadn't accepted, you would want to do that before you do the compare. So we're going to go ahead and click, say yes, we want to compare these. It should generate a new document, and it's going to highlight everything for us. So you can see side by side here, here's my original document, here's the revised one, and this compared document is letting me know what has happened. So you can see I've got a sidebar here giving me all of the revisions that were made. Now again, I can go back to my review ribbon and in the tracking section change this to all markup and it'll let me see that in true track changes 
with the deletions having strike throughs and the insertions having underlines. So you can see that this is the paragraph that I added. And you can also tell that my version did not match up with the original document that has been changed. So if I did want to say, you know what, this is really none of it's good. I don't want to keep it. At this point, I could just close out the document and know that my original document is the, the most recent correct version. If, on the other hand, I wanted to say, well, you know what, these are really good changes. We do need that paragraph in. Maybe then I want to combine the documents. So we would go back to our compare option and say that we want to combine documents. And it's very similar, the same process. We have the original report and we have the revised document. And in this case, we're going to say show changes in the original document because we want to make sure that our versioning is staying consistent. And it's going to ask us, well, which changes do you want to keep? We know that the one offline is the correct one, and then we continue with merge. The other option that you could take is create a brand new document and then upload that as a new version. So again, very, very simple tool. It's only one little spot on the ribbon, but it's very powerful when you're having to work with multiple copies because people aren't always working on OneDrive or SharePoint. So very, very quick tools, but very powerful tools within Word. And you do have some options for track changes and commenting on the Word Online app. But if you want to take full advantage of all these reference and reviewing tools, you mostly have to be working in the full Word web app. So I'm going to jump back to our PowerPoint really quickly and just kind of recap. So we talked about track changes, inserting and editing endnotes, footnotes, and cross-references. And then we also talked about comparing and combining documents. So those are very powerful tools in Word. Um, we know that they're always making changes to Office 365 in the future, even though we have simplified ribbons on our online apps, it may be that they add more reviewing tools. So right now, we still have the ability to insert endnotes and footnotes, and we also have the ability to insert comments. You know, if they decide later on that we want to make sure track changes are, are editable in Word Online as well, how are you going to keep up to date with that? One of the things that we have available at Planet is Evolve 365 which is our subscription-based help desk as a service for Microsoft Office 365. This really helps your end users to know exactly what they need and when they need it. We have on-demand self-help and thousands of searchable videos, including lots of videos on Word and some of these reference and reviewing tools. We also have the option to add on live support. And then you can also get some vision and planning if you're going through a large migration. Maybe you're coming from an older version of Word and you want to know how you can take advantage of all the availability of Office 365. So we do have um, a site that you can go and take a look at for a free trial. And that's at freetrial.o365support.com. It has some of our limited content on there. So on the full paid version, we have thousands and thousands of videos. On our free trial site, we have a smaller subset of our content. You can see that many of the videos are very short, 20 seconds, 45 seconds, really, really easy to get in there, find the information that you need, and then immediately put it to use, very similar to our In the Know tips and tricks sessions. So if you'd like to see more about that, please go out to our free trial and sign up. We do have some sample videos that you can check out. And if you enjoyed our session today, we really do hope that we see you back next week. You can always reach out to us on our website, and then you can also email us at info at o365support.com any other questions that you may have. So I did want to remind everybody of a couple of events. Um, this week we had our Planet Perspective, the future of SharePoint 2016, and we really broke down a lot of the announcements that Microsoft made last week. So if you're interested in catching that video again, you can find it on Planet's YouTube channel at youtube.com slash user slash Planet Technologies. Next week, we've got an Evolve 365 free Q&A session. We're going to show you some, some content from the free trial, and we'll also have an open Q&A session. You can go register for that on the Planet site as well. So if we don't have any questions, we are right at time, and we're going to go ahead and wrap it up today. Again, I hope you enjoyed this session. We will be back next week, where we're going to be talking about OneNote and all the different things that you can do that. So again, you can always catch these videos on our YouTube channel youtube.com slash user slash planet technologies. Thank you for joining us today and we will see you again.